This man is Abraham Lincoln. Perhaps you know him by his famous phrase. Hmm, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. Okay, stop. In this video, I'm about to tell you in a very simple way everything about Abe Lincoln's life, family, infancy, conspiracy theories, tragedy, war, and the creepy curiosities around his death and the coincidences that link Abraham Lincoln with John F. Kennedy. So let's go. This is Abraham Lincoln, but not or Abraham Lincoln, he is his grandfather of the same name. He lives in Kentucky, a place controlled by aggressive Native Americans. But this was not a problem for him, because he had weapons. Oh my god, what the heck is that? One day, when a Native American approached to him and his three sons, Mordecai, Thomas, and Yochai, saw their weapons, and he was so scared that attacked Lincoln's grandfather, his children ran away and let his father die. Unless Thomas, he was shocked. He had never watched something like that. What? Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Not like that, like this! Then the Native American came to finish him, and Mordecai came back and saved his brother. Some time later, the brothers grew up separated ways and Thomas met Nancy Hanks and fell in love. They had babies and got married. And then, Lincoln was born, the future 16th president of the United States. And curiously, he was the first in many things. The first president having a patent and the first president who fought vampires. Okay, for God's sake, I hope that you don't watch that movie. And so, he was the first president in being murdered. Okay, let's not get ahead. He wasn't always that one vampire hunter that you see in there. He was a little boy born in Kentucky. He had two other siblings, but one died in infancy. His childhood was hard. His parents didn't know how to read or even write, and they lived in poverty. I don't understand this. Let me see it, darling. Maybe I can help. At the age of seven, Lincoln was about to enter the school, but Thomas said, No, son, we don't have enough money. But don't worry, I saw a video of Andrew Tate. I invest everything in Dutch coin and sold the house for alcohol and silver. <laughs> Thomas wanted to give his family a new home, so he built a boat and traveled to Rolling Fork. But in the way, the boat capsized and the cargo fell out. So he entered the jungle and after a few days arrived in Spencer County in Indiana, where he left his belongings and went back to look for his family, where they grabbed a horse and arrived at their new home. Here Lincoln studied reading, learned to shoot a rifle and was very good at it. When he was nine years old, his mother died from poisoning from drinking milk. Abe read a lot and managed to enter a school where he learned basic arithmetic up to the rule of three. Oh my god, now I get it! At the age of 16, he was hired to carry merchandise. Okay, it was a bad joke, I admit it. They were transporting wood. Yeah, wood. They were carrying it to New Orleans, where they were intercepted and attacked by a group of people. However, they managed to carry the cargo and get home again. He had jobs transcribing letters, chopping wood. and was very popular in town. At 20 years old, he was a giant, he was 6 feet 2 inches tall, was very strong, thin, and with extremely large hands. It is believed that he had marathon syndrome, a disease that causes you to have abnormally long hands and limbs. At age 23, he went to the Black Hawk War. Uh, um, uh, I mean, Hawk. Possibly prompted by what happened to his father and grandfather. At politics, he did quite a few things. At that time, slavery was legal, so Lincoln opposed anything that promoted slavery. He ran for the US Senate, but lost. Was a congressman, lawyer, went to Springfield, and then he met Mary Todd, married her, and had four babies. Abe was against the intervention against Mexico, and for this reason, he's one of the US presidents most loved by Mexicans. He ran again for the Senate, and gained much recognition because of his incredible oratory in a debate. Yeah, yeah, I understand completely your point, but why don't we stop all this and let the blood flow instead? And this made people start talking about Lincoln. 
he later joined the Republican Party. And for people who don't know what a political party is, they're just politicians at a party at that sort of stuff. Finally, he was a candidate for the presidency, which he won by majority. Lincoln was against slavery and his election caused the southern states to panic and threatened to start a war to prevent the abolition of slavery. 1861. Lincoln's security believed that had initiated the plot to kill Lincoln when he was going to the inauguration of the presidency. So, to avoid the risk, a sophisticated strategy of surprising high technology for its time was created. On its way to Washington DC, before reaching Baltimore, the train stopped in Harrisburg, and then the new anti-recognizance technology device was placed in Lincoln. It was a disguise. A woman's disguise. <laughs> but I personally think that it was a lie and that Lincoln's security theme was pranking him. When he arrived at the inauguration, he gave his speech and it went something like this. What the fuck I mean like this? I have no purpose to interfere with your shit. I believe I have no legal right to do so, but if you try to make an invasion by armed force, I swear I will wipe you all out of the map, you deal clowns. You can have no conflict without being yourself the aggressors. I'm a low to close, we are not enemies, but friends. He wanted to eradicate slavery little by little because he understood that the southern states depended on slavery to keep their cotton plantations from going bankrupt. But this caused the southern states to separate from the United States and form the Confederate States of America. And this is part the bloodiest conflict in American history, the secessionist war. The American Civil War. Huh? No, 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 not that Civil War. Well, okay, I don't care anymore. Just let's go with the quick low effort summary of the American Civil War. Okay, this was a battle between President Lincoln of the Union and President Jefferson Davis of the Confederates. The Union preferred cereal first and the Confederates preferred milk first. And that's why they were so divided? Okay, who the heck wrote this? The North wanted to abolish slavery, but the South didn't want it. So, in order to win the war, three strategies were made. First, blocking economic action with Europe with the Anaconda Plan. Second, taking the Mississippi and dividing the Confederate forces. And third, taking Confederate capital in Richmond. So the Confederacy attacked Fort Sumter, and this got Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Northern California to become friends and join the Confederacy because they thought they had won the war. But this got Lincoln to call 75,000 soldiers to fight against the Confederacy. Hey, do you prefer cereal or milk first? It's two in the morning! Stop calling! Well, that's one more to the list. And then the battle began, with the Union taking control over the terrain of the Confederate forces. But then, the General Robert E. Lee arrived, and he was something like the MVP of this war, because he beat the Union in multiple occasions and took southwestern Missouri and forced them to retreat. But then, General McClellan of the Union arrived, and he said, Hey, you, mess with someone your size. He was destroyed and forced to retreat too. So the Union replaced McClellan with John Pope, but he also lost. And the Union started attacking the Confederate forces from all sides. From the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, from the water, from the land, from the mud, from the... In that moment, the battle was in the southern shores with ironclad ships. And meanwhile, the General Robert E. Lee was trying to take the reign over the Union to take Washington DC. But then, McClellan arrived again. But this time he took revenge and drove back Lee's forces in the Battle of Antietam, causing the bloodiest and most destructive battle in the war. A battle in which almost 3 to 5 people died. <laughs> Did you imagine? No, it's a joke. It was actually 50,000 people. This win caused the emancipation to be proclaimed, and now the black people could participate in the war. In the north, Lincoln was acting like a tyrant, imprisoning those who support Southern ideas, and in the south the economy was starting to look like <laughs> But the General Lee didn't want to surrender, so he tried to take Washington DC again in the Battle of Gettysburg, but he was defeated by General Meade of the Union. Because of this battle, Lincoln gave a speech, the speech of Gettysburg, in which the king the speaker spoke for two hours and Lincoln in two minutes unified the nation. Baba boy. 
Then General Sherman and General Grant took the Mississippi and destroyed the Confederate forces. And then General Lee and General Grant fought in the Overland Campaign, in which Lee lost. And after that, Lincoln was re-elected, and with the 13th Amendment, finally eradicating the slavery from the country. So, yay! Was it the end of the war? Well, not really, because no one wanted to give up. But in April 9th, Lee surrendered and the Union took control of Richmond, causing many southern states to surrender as well. <sighs> Let's go again with Lincoln's history. The war was in favor of the North, but someone was not happy with this. That was John Wilkes Booth, an actor who supported Southern ideas. He could not accept that the South lost and decided to take down Lincoln. So on April 14, when Lincoln was going to the Fourth Theater with his wife, in a nearby bar, there was Booth. Curiously, that same day, Lincoln authorized his guard not to take care of him, and the guard was in the same bar Booth was moments before. So Booth arrived at the theater when he used a steel strategy of the most trained secret agents of the CIA. He puts on a suit and walks calmly till reaching the room where Lincoln was. Because we all know that no one questions where a person wearing a suit is going. Then he came in and say, Hey you, yes you, you're a dumb. Um, I don't like this man very much. I must get to know him better. Then but pointed his gun at Lincoln's head, but Lincoln was such a good speaker that he managed to soften Bud's heart. But why don't we stop all this and let the blood flow instead? And then everyone in the theater applauded. But honey, I'm your wife! <gasps> you cheater! No, no, let me explain it! Then Bud jumped off the balcony, and for some reason he started speaking in Mexican or something like that. Actually, it was Latin, and he said Six Semper Tyrannis, which means always to tyrants. Then he grabbed a horse and went to Virginia. He believed that this would make the South win back the war, but instead, after Lincoln's death, black people were given the right to vote and citizenship, and thousands of soldiers, loyal to Abe, went out to hunt Wood, and it was a shot from the Boston Corbett soldier that met him on April 26. The worst part is that President Abraham Lincoln was in a coma after the shot for 9 hours. Oh, he's waking up. Mm, I was talking to Karl Marx by mail after the war, and I really believe that communism- Nurse, give me that pillow there, he's about to say something stupid! But unfortunately, nothing could be done. And at 7 a.m., he died. After Lincoln's death, the creation of a federal agency for the protection of presidents began, which performed impeccable work. There are many curiosities regarding this case. For example, sometime before Lincoln's assassination, but brother saved the life of Lincoln's son, who had fallen on the train tracks because he was pushed. On the other hand, there is a belief that Lincoln was homosexual because of some strange poems that he sent. But without a doubt, the most interesting thing are the conspiracy theories around the coincidences that link the President Lincoln with the President Kennedy. There were both second children, they began politics at the 1846 and 1946 as members of a congress. They were elected presidents in the 60s, and while Lincoln prohibits slavery, Kennedy prohibits racial discrimination. The two died in front of their wives from a shot to the head on Friday. President Kennedy was shot in a Ford Lincoln car, and the President Lincoln was shot in the Ford Tether. Lincoln's security guard was named John Parker, and the doctor on Kennedy's medical team was named the same. Was it all a conspiracy or is it just coincidence? Is Kennedy a reincarnation of Abraham Lincoln? Was Abraham Lincoln a real vampire hunter? We will never know. And I don't really give a fuck. See you next time. Or maybe not. Sorry bro, I almost forgot. All right, good night, bro.